Hello, Slack API developers. Hope you're doing well. Um, in this video, I want to show you exactly how to implement logic to store users' credentials and also query them um, so that you can handle multiple users using your app at the same time. And what we'll do is we'll have some working code to actually store and um, create new entries in a database um, when we need to store new users' credentials. And also we'll have a find user function that will be able to query and find the current user's credentials. Um, so at the end, I'll have my GitHub li uh, code linked, but for now, I wanna go through a diagram to actually show you exactly what we're gonna go through. So with OAuth, what we do to start the OAuth process is actually click on this user's um, add to Slack button. So when a user clicks add to Slack, the Slack API is gonna check if there's any admin scopes that are being requested. If there are admin scopes, we're gonna take this left path. So that means now, if we're requesting admin scopes, this app has to be installed on the organization. So let's take this left road here. At this point, if once we install the app on the org, we're gonna check our database to see if we have a token for the user. If we do have a token for the user, then yes, we're gonna call, uh, we're gonna basically just query our database. So fetch installation is the Bolt.js um, framework code that will help us do this. So fetch installation will query our database for the user's credentials. And then at the end, the user credentials return and the app runs properly. If we don't, if we first see that we do not have a um, credential or token or anything like that for this user, we're gonna actually call store installation. So what store installation is gonna do is it's gonna save new user credentials in the database. And then the next time that user uses the app, fetch installation is gonna find them. So in this step, when we check if we have a token for the user, we're gonna find it because uh, store installation has stored that for us. Now, let's just say if there are no admin scopes, so this is, this is like the most simple case, no admin scopes, then we can just install the app on the workspace. So it'll work on any sort of plan. It does This uh, org uh, admin scopes can only be installed on enterprise plans. So now same thing happens on the right hand side too. We're gonna call fetch installation, query our database. Do we have a token for this user? Yes, if we do, then we just grab that and we don't even call store installation. Uh, because we just grab the user credentials, they return and the app runs properly. Um, same thing on this side. If we don't have the credentials, we just call store installation. And let me show you the Bolt uh, JS code for that. So um, go into Bolt and authenticating with OAuth. And here is essentially uh, the code. And you can see here too in the code, we're checking for enterprise install. So store installation basically is gonna have two checks. So basically the first one is if we are installing on the org, um, then we're gonna basically set our key for the database to be the enterprise ID. Otherwise, we're gonna set it to be the team ID. And then for fetch installation, same thing, we're checking if it's an enterprise install, so anything on the org level, or similarly, we're just gonna check for the team ID and uh, delete installation, um, I, I'm not covering right now because fetch and, and store uh, is kind of enough to get you going. Uh, but now that we understand kind of the main uh, flow, let's get into the code. Why don't we first, so basically the code uh, for this sample is in this uh, part three dash auth branch. So go ahead and check out that um, part three branch and go ahead and clone that. I won't show you how to do that, um, but my previous videos show you how to clone a different branch. What you'll also need to do is you'll have to set up and MongoDB free uh, database account. Uh, you don't have to use Mongo, but just all the code that I wrote was with Mongo uh, and Mongoose to do to querying. So I think it would be easiest um, if you had a Mongo database as well. So um, if you can go ahead and create a free Mongo database and uh, create a database, click just create database and then you know uh, call it OAuth YouTube demo. And uh, yeah. So you'll need to have this set up for this uh, database so we can actually store uh, credentials of our users. Um, we'll basically be storing the token type. I'm not gonna uh, show you all the, uh, I'm not gonna show you everything here, but you can kind of see the uh, what the token looks like, um, the user ID, bot ID, things like that. Um, and that's what you'll be storing in the database. So basically what I've done um, is that now I've set custom routes in a different file. So it's still kind of the similar as before, but instead of having it in app.js, I have it in a different file. 
What we really care about now is the, uh, it, this is the main logic of the code. So basically we have two parts of the code that we want to understand, um, and that is the installation store. So this is going to be actually saving um, our user credentials. Um, so the, basically the bot ID, the bot token, uh, whatever team this user is on, we're going to save that in this logic, chunk of logic. And in fetch installation, this is where we find the user's credential that uh, that is submitting, in our case, is submitting a command. So first we'll see if we can find the user. If we can't find it, we create it. Um, so we go into store installation. So for me, the hardest part about this flow was understanding when the code reaches this point. So actually the code only reaches this point um, when you actually install the app. So let me show you. So you basically have to go through the full auth flow. So I've already done npm install, um, and we'll do npm start, and make sure you do uh, source.env. Um, so basically, uh, I'm not going to show you my .env file, but basically in here, this is really important. You're going to need your database username, so mine is just um, horiaparutuon, and then your password, um, so that's just your password to your Mongo account, and then of course that db name, as you saw, this is mine. Um, and then you're going to need to fill out your client ID, client secret, signing secret, just as in the previous videos. And then do source.env, um, and then npm start. So now um, I have my ngrok running, same as before. Um, so I'll copy that, and I'll take that into Safari, and I'll paste it, and I'll do slack slash uh, install slash uh, workspace. Um, so I'll click add to Slack. And again, we've already gone through this. And now you can see that um, once I've clicked add to Slack um, and we've gone, we've basically done the redirect, that is when the handler is called. And you can see installation um, with the object here. And here's the installation object. Um, and you can see the bot scopes, the token, everything like that. Um, and now, so, so you, we've seen a really basic install. And now let's dig a little bit deeper into the authentication. Let's go ahead and check out the code for the database. Um, so pretty standard database code. It's not super pretty or anything. Um, uh, yeah, this is definitely not my specialty. My specialty is not Mongo code, but uh, here it is. So I basically, in this part, I'm just connecting to the Mongo database. Uh, so I've provided providing my username, password, and then the database name. I'm connecting to it in lines nine through 15. And now we actually have to set a schema. This is the basically the schema or the structure of the objects that will be saved in our database. You can see mostly just strings. We have an array of scopes here. Um, right now you can see the scopes is just a command, uh, but you know, what you're seeing in this schema is, is actually what is actually being saved in Mongo. And this is where we export the user schema. Um, that's all good and fine. And then we just do a simple query. So model.user.find and we check for the ID here. Um, this is for, uh, returning that user, um, so we can return their credentials. And that where we use this find user is in, um, right here. So you do dbquery.findUser, and that's basically just calling this uh, findUser function here. And the last two pieces, this is kind of the main logic uh, that I want you to understand, is the store user org install and store user workspace install. And this is essentially just updating the schema or basically uh, taking the values from that installation object. So you can see this installation object, uh, which, is, which is logging right here. Um, so it's basically taking all these fields and data and ex essentially just putting it into this model. And then at the end, um, we just do update one. So it just updates basically if there's already a user ID, but now let's say that our app is requesting more scopes, it'll overwrite the same user ID, but now with the uh, extra scopes added. This is what the upsert true is, is doing as well. And that's it. Um, this is very similar for the uh, workspace install, just a little bit different fields. Um, and that's more or less it. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and do one more now. So we'll do the same thing. We'll use the custom routes, but we'll go to org admin. Now. I'll go into here, um, slash slack, slash install, slash org admin. 
So again, this because I'm requesting um, admin scopes, I have to install this on an organization. So you can see the only organization I have is Horiademo.org. The rest are all just workspaces because they're not on the enterprise plan. So here I'll go into my enterprise plan. I'll click allow. So you can see before I click allow, uh, nothing has happened yet. But once I do click allow, uh, immediately you can see that um, installation object here. Here's our enterprise ID. And here's, here's the token, uh, user ID, conversations right, etc. Um, so yeah, that was basically doing the uh, custom routes. Um, so that's gonna that will use the org admin, and um, essentially, what we've done is we've saved our workspace auth um, because we've gone into here. Um, and then let me show you in Mongo now. So you can see now um, if I refresh, I should have two users. Um, again, this ID here, what we talked about earlier, what you saw in my console, and then this uh, team ID here. Um, so yeah, that's basically um, a quick video on how to um, do user authentication in Slack using OAuth and saving your user's credential in a MongoDB database. Um, I hope this was useful and thanks for watching. Bye.